Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Rock and Beards podcast. It's your boy HSR, and I'm Kristen. And uh, before we get into it, this is a very special episode. Uh, plug our patrons now: Linda Williams, Mozart, Mozart, and uh, Super Old School in 1994. Uh, part of that is we do a, a request raffle, so each of these people uh, threw in the album that they wanted us to review. And uh, the, this this episode is the result of that raffle and uh, was selected by uh, Mr. Linda Williams, and we'll get to that. But just uh, to let you know, that's uh, why we chose this, and that's how we got here. So uh, basically, we go through these albums track by track. We give our opinions. In most cases, like I've never even heard the shit before. <laughs> you know, it's why. almost always new experiences, but that's kind of the point, is to share it with you. And especially for you seasoned vets and hardcore fans, this is what the newbie eye sees when they go through the album and whatnot. Um, that was just kind of that, just to give you a little sense, because sometimes people expect reaction videos or whatever. But we're more conversational. Mm. Um, and uh, just to show you that we are about that conversation, I read every single comment that gets posted to this channel. I respond to every comment. Kristen turned it around in five days this time, not six. <laughs> Whoop! And uh, this was on last week's uh, episode, which was Marilyn Manson's Antichrist Superstar. And it was a regular commenter, Thuggish Ruggish Bone. And he said, we hate love, we love hate is also a factual statement. Try not to hate when you have started hating. In the words of Master Yoda, amazing. Once <laughs> you are uh, down the dark path forever, will it dominate your destiny? Which is very cool. Which is a really good way to like kind of interpret the lyric and like point out the reality behind it. A lot of people engage in a faux outrage. Very true. Just go on social media. A recreational outrage social media. Because they want to hate, or not even so everything. Fucking even the water cooler. I literally sit next to the water cooler at work. Just throwing it out there. Um, uh, I get caught up in the habit of hating. Uh, the bad thing about Marilyn Manson satire is that people don't understand it. All good satire, mm -hmm. throwing it out there, has that problem. Um, and uh, it's sort of both. He both makes it fun of hating people indiscriminately while he expresses his hatred, which I think makes it kind of brilliant art. That's some like mm -hmm. Tupac type shit as I understand it. And then uh, kind of getting wrapped up in the role you are playing and then becoming that character. That's some Bowie type shit. Uh, hate is like a drug, but uh, a very shitty one. Completely understand where you're coming from, my friend. Satire can be a double-edged sword. It's not a good thing to point out and a bad thing. And then do the thing it only perpetuates what you are rallying, like railing against. Like when other people critique postmodernists deconstructing them, ironically becoming the postmodernists themselves. I got through the comment. Um, as you can see, there's some serious like nuggets of like interesting knowledge in there. Um, mm. I genuinely enjoy them, and I look forward to hearing what y'all have to say to educate us or correct us or to teach us about the uh, band along the way. Um, so yeah, why don't we get into it, Kristen, since this is not here, why don't you introduce the album we will be talking about today? The album that we will be talking about today is called, it's from the Rollins Band? Rollins. Ro Rollins Band? Like Roll Henry yeah, Rollins? Henry Rollins. I, I pronounce things in my own way. And um, <laughs> it's called Wait. Yes. And um, yes. So it's my first time listening to this. It's a whole new discovery of the, not only the band, but the genre of music. Um, yeah, that. That's fair. Um, I kind of know who Henry Rollins is in a sense that, like, I've seen a couple of interviews describing his experiences with Black Flag. And, and as I understand it, he's a bit of an activist. And I know that about him. And I know Black Flag's a really influential punk band. And I've listened to snippets here and there. And I know he was the singer for a few years. And uh, he wasn't the first singer. He was, I believe, the second singer. I could be wrong. And not, then there was the Rollins Band, and from what the internet quickly told me, he does a lot of, I wasn't really expecting this, actually, spoken word kind of singing mm. stuff. Like, it's, I don't really, I'd never heard anybody really approach lyrics quite like that. So, um, yeah, this was definitely my first Rollins Band experience. Uh, Lindell, you, you picked an interesting one. I'm going to throw that out there. Very, thank you. Um, <laughs> I don't really have a lot to say. I know that this album, 
uh, the dude from Living Color had recommended, I think, the bassist who had been switched up and was the second bassist that was now there. Um, I know that all these dudes are like in the band are extremely talented musicians who are like whatever handpicked by Rollins to be like the perfect ensemble to create the ambiance he was going for, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot more to go. Um, the album's called Weight, like as in a heavy weight is on his shoulders and the album mm-hmm. cover kind of has like an empty stage with like i think this, like mm-hmm. a microphone or something it says robin's band at the top and it's just kind of very black there might be more to it there's um, a thing going down i don't know there's some sort of i didn't spend a lot of thing. time looking at it because it didn't have <laughs> a lot for me to look at i didn't find it that enticing um but i mean it's fine. It's a fine album cover, but the name is interesting because it kind of implies a lot of anything and everything, right? Like, it's kind of like it could be a lot of things. It could be like literal weight weighing upon them or metaphorical, or it could just be like this is the. You kind of you get the sense of heavy feeling. You get the feeling of the whole album as itself. What is, what is it going to convey? Weight? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know a lot more. Do you want to comment other stuff? Um, it was I just it was nothing significant. I mean, it's an interesting album cover, and the, I don't know. It's just the, the title in itself. You're like, oh, I wonder what I'm gonna expect. Nothing, nothing more. All right. So uh, please don't disconnect from this video. <laughs> Myself, I want nothing right now. I wanna pull it out. All right, Kristen. Uh, how do you feel about this track? Disconnected. No. <laughs> I, I I mean I think I was very surprised at the beginning. I was just like, oh, okay, I've never heard something like this before. Um, I like how it started. It was like staticky. And so you're like, what? what's going to happen with this song? And um, the hook to I disconnect myself is just, it's very intense. And the way he's, like we were saying, it's like he's rhythmically speaking almost. And it was just very easy to get into and want to listen. Like at the beginning, it was more surprising. And oh, what's going on with this song? And after like a minute it's like i really okay this is cool and i like the lyrics too which i think we're going to probably go into more again but there's a lot of um like he does parallels like so i don't like to think too much it makes me think too much don't want to see too much it makes me see too much and it's cool because it as he's even though he's talking it's not just it's not just like speaking it's i don't know it's and it's not too metaphorical either it's not so it's nothing too complex and it's nothing too simple i feel like he found the right the in between with the right intensity vocally to say what he's saying and i i really liked it i would give it like a a four and a half yeah um so like i mean i'd say like the genre of music here it kind of feels more on that like rock and roll but like a hard rock and roll kind of sound what i mean by that is like the guys playing the instruments are not your your like typical pop shit you know like they're like extremely on point with like the kind of rhythmic stuff that like sid would be dropping mad terms on (laughs) that i don't actually know i was looking i was like please come we need you for the terminology but. but like at the end of the day like it's a lot of subtleties, a lot of intricate things change, and they really almost serve as this backdrop to paint like the picture that Mr. Henry Rollins is uh, going for. And he does come in, and I don't want to sound like negative with it, but he kind of sounds like Blondie in that goofy rapping style that people did in the '80s. That kind of like, like they don't necessarily have like they have cool flow or anything they're not trying to rap it just kind of comes off in that kind of 80s-esque silly hip-hop flow which i really really appreciated because you could you could feel the sincerity in what he was doing it was this rhythmic talking singing thing that Mm -hmm. was really interesting to me to hear it was just i was I was so caught off guard like the first time i heard this album i swear all the songs sounded like the same to me and yeah. then like it took yeah. a few listens to like really come to be like this is actually really fucking cool but yeah as he pointed out the, they did that thing with the lyrics we responded to himself it's like sometimes he'd rather be blind but all the things that they're saying and doing when they, they pass me by just fills me up with noises it overloads me i want to disconnect myself pull my brain stems out unplug myself i want nothing right now i want to pull it out 
And then he, like, screams a lot about disconnecting himself a whole lot more. But, like, immediately, that just kind of makes me picture today and now a lot more than it makes me picture, I think, 96 or whenever this album came out. And um, because, like, I mean, back then the internet was new. Like, I'm actually reading a book about, like, the dot-com kind of bubble and how all the bad shit happened then and just the craze of the 90s and everyone was connecting to the internet and information and stuff. And in a sense, as time goes on here and now with global internet being coming a thing more and more and stuff, we're, we're kind of in like a more intensified version of kind of what Henry Rollins was talking about then. This, this crazy influx of technology. I picture like maybe it wasn't a Facebook back then, but like cell phones were probably becoming mm-hmm. like really popular. And in a sense, if you look at a world probably like in the 80s when nobody had cell phones, you really could – nobody could get a hold of you unless you wanted to get – unless you made yourself available. And here you have Henry being like, no, nah, I just want to get unplug, go away. And you see people mm-hmm. having that desire. Like literally people fly to other countries to spend a week on a beach to disconnect themselves. Mm-hmm. You know? I'll be doing that in a week. <gasps> uh, it's freaking cool. <laughs> I, uh, I hope to be doing that in December. Um, but uh, a thousand miles an hour going nowhere fast, clinging to the details of your past, talking about your damage and you're wasting my time, want to be the king of pain, stand in line, all the numbers and colors and the facts, backed by the rumors and the figures and the stats, I think I'm going to download my mind. Now, I believe, and I might be wrong, and I'm going to interpret Henry here, he's kind of criticizing people who are of different groups, who may be using statistics and are looking up a whole bunch of information on the internet to kind of prove that life isn't fair. And now let, we've, we've proved empirically to like all fucking scientific point that life isn't fair. Mm-hmm. And I think what Henry's trying to say is, honestly, you're wasting my time with this nonsense. I'm trying to be productive with my life. And this is just a distraction that gets in my way. I want to disconnect myself. Now, I'm not going to say I I 100% agree with him in, like, the 2018's Enlightening, Mm. but for, like, 96, that's some pretty fucking intelligent shit, you know? Like, I'm not going to say that, like, I kind of think maybe he's a little bit attacking people more than he should in that point, but I also know who what subgroup of these Mm. groups he's talking about. Well, I think he's also speaking in an emotional state of mind, so that really you can... Yeah, it's ten times more intense than like when you rationalize it, and uh, you can feel it with the way he's delivering it, which is interesting. I feel like he had these conversations like a thousand times, and these these like songs are just him really putting succinctly what he wants to say on every mm. topic we're going to talk about here. Here he's basically warning against the vast information overloads or. You know, do you, would you have the like the last line? I think is my favorite. Or I think it's the last line. I may be wrong, or it's at the end. But it says, "If I mean some, if it means something to you, it, or may mean something to you, but it's nothing to me. It's just another ad for someone's version of how they think you should be." Oof. Damn. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, I think at the that point there, he's kind of pointing out the the marketing. Uh, the whole verse kind of has that same tone, um, of all these other people's ideas especially yeah. at the if you look at marketing and technological pushing of ideas everyone's trying to program you to be a, a certain way and you should look a certain way and this is attractive and this and that and, and it's all marketing and i think he's trying to tell you to wake the fuck up and so his disconnect now goes one step further and it's to think for yourself and disconnect from the normative definitions of what you're supposed to be. Uh, I don't know. This song was really cool. It was deep. It gave me a lot to like actually think about, which I think was his intention. And I also think it's what Lindell was hoping for. Um, And uh, musically, it was pretty fucking great. Like it's not my cup of tea. It's not like the first thing I'm going to go to, but I feel like there's this, pensive vibe that you can just chill out to this album when you want to philosophize about yep. some shit okay. and i don't know that there's a lot of that out there that i can vibe to that's not hip-hop so yeah. it's kind of cool four and a half on five i agree with you mm-hmm. it's fucking pretty awesome um i i we're think not, yeah. I, no go on, go <laughs> i was on. gonna say we're not fools I, yeah something <laughs> like that I need you. I'm a fool to believe. my heart is so um, how do you feel about this one? It's usually better if other people talk first. <laughs> how do I feel about this? Um, I, I, I liked it. I like, <laughs> I like the, um, I really liked the track. It was a good build up too. Um, and 
lyrically, once again, I mean, I think that it's just going to go for the entire album of how I find it's like that sweet spot between not too complicated or not too metaphorical, but not too like bluntly straight up simple. Okay. Um, and I like like the line, my favorite line, I should be healing myself instead of hurting myself. And you could just feel like it's so relatable too. I just keep saying like I'm such a fool for like mistaking all of these things and like seeing something the wrong way. I don't know. I I just I liked it. It was very real. Um, and I would give it a four and a half too. Yeah. Um, it starts off like really heavy and kind of like builds up, and then it goes into. Um, he's more singy. I found on this one. Like it's not mm. talking. And it's not quite, like, it's almost like he's adding melody and intensity to his regular voice rather than trying to, like, go out of his way to, like, It's like, like a melodic spoken word or, like, some sort of rhythmic talking with a tiny bit of singing here and there, but not really. There we yeah. go. <laughs> and, uh, like, this track appears to be about, like, going back to a girl that you know is toxic and hurtful towards you, but, like, being addicted and being, to quote Mr. Rollins, a fool. Uh, and so, yeah, like, I should have seen my end coming from a long way off. You know, I should have had some foresight. Everything about this situation is very, like, typical. My friend said, man, she'll give you the blues, so, man, don't get caught. Maybe he's cheating here a little bit, or maybe it's his heart getting caught by this girl. Yeah, maybe she's going to leave him, dump him. <laughs> uh, and then, but I went right ahead and told himself a pack of lies, how many of us have done this? Most of us have done this. We found some of us a little bit bad for us. We told ourselves a pack of lies. We went ahead and did some shit. It was all bad news. Uh, spent, uh, you know, night after night hammered, uh, getting back my mind. So then after the situation or during it, maybe he gets smashed all the time and kind of loses himself. But he's a fool when he needs you and he's a fool that he believes and et cetera, et cetera. So the chorus kind of comes in and sells the point that it's almost like this whole song is like, I'm a fool who wears my heart on my sleeve. And I really want you. And I, instead of being productive, and as we know, Henry Rollins values productivity. Um, he is wasting his time in the pursuit of this emotional conquest that ultimately is going to self-mutilation mm. is the way he describes it. You know, right after that hurt himself yeah. line, self-mutilation and- is the only thing I know. I'm a fool. I know. I like I can't judge the dude. I have been that dude. I have lived that moment with at least a couple of girls where a, a situation should have ended. But I was a fool, yep. and and stuff goes on, and I feel like it's highly correlated with youth. Hopefully, I um, mean, yeah. I like I owned it though. I just it was nice to see from the perspective of him, just like admitting, like yeah, I'm like I did something stupid, and I didn't see it, and I was blind, and it's not like I was blinded by you, and you're the bad one, and you're the. It's just literally like. I don't know, a unique, a nice perspective where it's just kind of not even self-deprecating or like, I hate my, it's just, th- it's this just, is what it is. I love Here it. we go. I agree with you. I agree that that's a really good uh, description of a tone that he takes. Um, like, I also don't necessarily know how, like, biographical it all is. Mm-hmm. Like, it maybe is biographical, but I feel I like what see. he's trying to do is, on. Uh, it's like every song is like an essay. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. He's, he's trying to prove a thesis of sorts or take on, like, because, like, there's some contradiction if it's all about him or maybe it is all about him and it's his past first self versus his present self or something. Or I don't, I don't really know. I may be talking on my ass a bit, but I feel like he's in his, his main goal is to capture the essence of something. So in this case, this love fool yep. idiot guy in the last case, he was, you know, trying to describe a person who was frustrated and maybe they are about him or his experiences with other people, but fucking it's just honest blunt but it's so universal it's like it's impossible to not connect to this a little bit when i hear it um it goes on and i don't find like there's anything more i mean i wasn't the biggest fan of seduced rejected reduced ejected again and all that like i kind of feel like the song by the end i was a little bit like okay it's not quite as <laughs> Calm down. it did it, it didn't like keep me ensnared as much as the first one. But then again, maybe if I sit on it long enough, but maybe it's just because I don't care as deeply towards the, in- like I don't find this song as interesting to think about as let's say disconnect. It's an okay mm. track. I give it a 4.25 because that musicianship is fucking fantastic. Yep. And all things considered, this is still fucking like compared to anything we've covered. Again, not quite like Manson or like, or tool interesting, but in a whole other realm Definitely, of interesting. Yeah. Uh, anyway, 
Next one is Icon. What's I think really weird is that I think like f like practically every album we've covered lately has had this song on it. This mm. um particular subject matter has been explored at length on this podcast a little bit a bit from such different takes. This is yeah. definitely not the angstiness of Jonathan Davis or Brian's I guess album is basically just on this subject entirely. Um and uh yeah. I don't know. What did you think about Icon? Um, I mean, first of all, musically, it was I I, I enjoyed it because it, it was it wasn't like the other two, which is great. It gave it that change it needed. So then you weren't like, oh, okay, next track. Oh, that sounds similar, which I think some bands end up doing, and then you kind of lose interest in in the first listen. Um, and it was it seemed very just complex. And then when you get into the lyrics too, I mean, uh, which we'll talk about more. It's I think they were great. Um, also, his vocal technique. There's some good good vocal fry in there which i can appreciate that's my favorite thing my one of my favorite techniques um and then when you have like the when he's like feel the burn and then it and, like goes into this like guitar heavy like da -na -na thing <laughs> um and then there's some like cool ass breakdown at the end and i think like as a whole like even if you just take away the lyrics it's a great song like the the music it's a good track and you can imagine another like singing on it and then mm. when you put his voice into it, it actually fits, and the emotion that he's putting into it, or the technique, even more. So it's 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 really, I think it's really cool. And the subject matter, I mean, fits. Yeah. Yeah, I like this one. But what'd you give it? Oh, what'd I give it? Um, four and a half, two. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Solid. Uh, I feel like this is a lot more punky, which I appreciate a lot. Uh, punk is definitely one of my favorite types of music, even if I rarely talk about it on this channel. Um, but, like, this song is interesting because he's, like, satirizing, like, music icons and just icons mm. in general, I think. Not necessarily music icons, but in the same sense of, like, you know, megalomaniac personalities. Um all eyes turned up to the hero, charismatic icon, animal man. So I got to imagine he's been around certain types of personalities given his time in the punk scene and whatnot. Uh, lyrical visionary caught in the spotlight. The more you make, the more you get it right, right? And I guess this could even be about himself a little bit too because he was, I guess, one of these people. I guess he is this famous. I might be wrong. Um uh, oh, nothing can stop you and no one can bring you down. Don't give it a thought tomorrow because you're the man right now. I mean, you just got to look on social media. Like anybody who's hot in a minute kind of gets that invincibleness to them. Like I know this might be a little out of place, but just like look at like a Takashi 6 9 or just the way these guys put themselves on the Internet in such a trollish attack the world kind of way. And then, you know, they feel unstoppable because they're finally hot because they finally have some money and shit, you know. And then it doesn't matter what you say because they always find some meaning in it anyway. So you make them feel like they're a part of some big event, blah, blah, blah. And that's really interesting because I feel like Jaden Smith's proof to the pudding. It doesn't really matter what you say. You can literally drop any kind of whatevers mm. and, like, people will um, – well, if you're famous or you are that icon, they'll just attribute whatever meaning they want to it based on how they perceive you, right? So I suppose if you're ambiguous, then uh, you can be an icon easier than having opinions. I don't know. And then it kind of like transitions a little bit about to the weight of this. And then um, I love how um, he kind of goes, the one thing that you might not know. And this is like right at the end of the song, after everything's exploded, after the weights crash down, after the idea of like – maintaining this lifestyle is is like put in your face so it's all good and gravy at first but then it turns into this awful nonsense and then there'll be uh the one thing that you might not know is there'll be another messiah right here next week mm. and my brain immediately goes from britney to Lindsay, <laughs> and just that transition like overnight it was like britney was out and Lindsay was the subject of all the tabloids and then it moved on to like the next one and then like it's just i i know it's just these comparisons but like it's icons. I think mm -hmm. it's just so – it just proves the universal nature of, I think, the dude's lyricism. I think his poetry is dope. I think that, like, the track is fucking wicked. It's another four and a half on five. I have to admit, you do have to be in a mood for this band, but damn, it's fucking cool. Um, 
Yeah, next one is uh, is civilized. civilized. Money fools like you, it out, killing like it ain't no thing. It's about guns. Throwing it out there. Guns. Or whatever. No, parts of it are about guns. Um, uh, I'm sitting in my room in your prison doing time, but my windows, because you got so good at crime, you're standing on the corner with nothing in your head, shirt on your back, and a gun in your pants, thinking you're the man. You're only a stand-in, standing in line to be the next bad guy. I see what you do when you, you use what you got, but what do you do when you do what you want? You're so civilized. You get brutalized. Anyway, she just, just paints this picture of this hardened, like, thug-type person. Yeah. But kind of alludes it's basically because you got a gun. And yeah. then otherwise, you know, and then anyway... I don't want to go on too deep right now. I just wanted to set the preface. It's such a, it took it took a listen. It took like the second listen for it to really connect what the fuck he was talking about because he goes blunter later on. But mm-hmm. how did you feel about this? It was interesting. I mean, it was kind of at the beginning, like, and again, different sound. Very cool about that. I can I really respect them for like not starting off the same way or like a similar all the time. And um, it it, sound, it's, it feels a little more narrative lyrically mm. but again done in a smart way and the music is very very complex or like maybe complex is the wrong word but it just feels like they put effort into it it's not just chorus and there's not just like the same riff over and over and that's it they change it up um and the hook i love the hook and it's just like because you're civilized and it's like very like you're just saying it and yeah like that whole like thug feeling to it and you just want to go like yeah you're like ah. um and it's just i i like i enjoyed it and i was surprised that i enjoyed it okay it's just i don't know i was like okay cool and the thing is on this album too that the songs are surprisingly a little long like what are some of them four or five yeah they're all about minutes. like five ish minutes on average like it's uh 12 tracks at 60 minutes yeah so that's the thing but it doesn't really get that boring compared to some other albums where tracks are long and then you're like waiting and it's like okay like i fast forward so i don't know i'd give it what, once again my famous number of this podcast 4.5 that's fair um i think just to like follow up on the boring point it's uh it's a combination of like Henry Rollins, you, you want to hear what he says next because, like, you, you kind of don't know if he's, if, he's, if he's, like, laid it down yet or what next level he's planning on taking it to. Mm. So there's that level of interesting and it, his, like, transition between, like, these calmer verses and this more talky style to his more screamy hooks that seems to yeah. be, like, the niche of this album. And it adds a bit of difference, too. It's not like you don't... It's not exactly the same to the point where it's not, like you know the next verse is structured exactly the same in terms of, like, everything, yeah. and you know exactly what it's going to sound like. It's like you're waiting for the conversation. You're listening to somebody who's talking to you about something very intensely. <laughs> but then, like, there's also the musicianship where these mm. guys are so versatile and they're able to create so many moods and energies on the same track, and, and, and like, they give him so much to bounce off of that the synergy between, like, the band and his voice creates this, like, explosive and dynamic experience where... It, it doesn't feel boring after five minutes because it's not repetitive and boring. It's just alive and they don't care about song mm-hmm. structure or whatever. They're giving you this experience. In this case, the track explores guns and shit. So mm-hmm. it gives you that kind of calmer intro. And it isn't really that aggressive yet. It's just kind of painting a picture like he's watching you, like he knows what's up. And then he explodes on the chorus. But then, you know, getting your mind off some guy's record, he makes his money off fools like you. So here, I guess he's criticizing people who like are influenced by music and want to get a gun and go live that life because they hear famous people doing it. Singing about killing like it ain't no thing, but the time when you live it for it's real, you know? like So here people are talking about murder and killing and all this other shit but he's going you know what happens when you do this in real life you get fucking time it it's fucking not good paying his way from your death row cell you're the last one to see you got sold out I hear you say you hate pigs so much then what the hell you act like one and then you go okay so what he's saying there is like so like 
I hear you, and I, I wonder if he's talking to black folk. I don't know. It kind of sounds generalized in a way. He might be addressing a certain community at the time or whatever, just people in general who hate cops and but like also pack heat and live more of a gangbanger lifestyle is what I interpret. And um, he's kind of pointing out that like, so you hear some gangster or somebody famous tell you to live this way, and then you kill people, so you murder your own whatever, you know, and then you talk about how you hate pigs, which is cops, but you act like them because you commit the same kind of mm. murder and hate crimes that they do. And then he fucking goes on and elaborates it. I wonder what you're like without the gun. So it's like, okay, so now he's going, so what if you didn't have your guy? You still a tough guy, motherfucker? I, I had that, that motherfucker in. <laughs> um, I'd like to see what you, when you're not hiding behind a gun, how would you live without the gun? Because I know how I lived mine because you got one. Yeah, that is what it is. You hide behind it. So he's kind of, again, he's being a little bit repetitive, but he's kind of like drilling in the point that like he knows how he can hold his own because he don't have a gun. He knows what the fuck he's capable of. But like say you no longer have your gun. Are you still able to handle the situation? Are you still a man? Are you still a person? But then you take life, you're just another pig to me. You think you're different, but you're just another pig. Yeah, a pig. Yeah, you got to have a gun, then you're just another pig to me. And then anyway, he goes on from there. But like, it's really, oh, whoops. I think it's really interesting how his, his whole point here is that if you're willing, if you hate the cops because the cops kill people and the cops commit these atrocities, but you're willing to murder and you're willing to take a life, then in his mind, you're just as villainous and fucking awful as the, the pigs, which mm. I don't know if I agree with that point fully, but it's definitely something that I would like to, I guess from my opinion is that I see where he's coming from and it's a provocative idea. It is, it is kind of hypocritical to hate people when you're willing to, and I've seen rappers touch on that kind of subject matters on like black on black crimes and stuff so like i know that he's not isolated in his feelings i just i thought it was so interesting you know mm -hmm. you know if you got a gun in any comments on how like if you want freedom you shouldn't like be killing people like the gun that gives you freedom it's not real freedom and whatever anyway lyrically it's super fucking interesting but sonically i liked it a little bit less i'm not gonna lie i mm -hmm. give it a four still a good song but of like the first four that we've listened to, this is my least favorite of the four mm -hmm. in terms of like the sound of um, the concept. Holy shit. This was so interesting to talk about. Like the song itself is interesting. Oh, no, I, you and do. so like, yeah. he, I, I guess achieved his goal, man. I don't know how long this little segment was. I feel like this one is a lot to talk about at least because he, he made it easy. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Rollins band team. Y'all are awesome. Um, you are I don't know if you're the divine object of hatred. It's interesting. I mean, it wasn't my favorite. Um, I liked the riff a lot. It was it did, so the music itself was cool, but I felt like this one was very repetitive and it's just kind of like going and going and going. Um, and I mean, you can feel his emotion through the song. But I wasn't, I mean, even lyrically, I don't know, just, it wasn't one that, like, stuck to me as much as others, I think. Uh, and I'd give it, like, a 425. Um, okay. This one took a second for me to really wrap my head around, because it wasn't so obvious uh, to me what he was trying to convey. But, because he, so, they killed me, they tied my hands with rope, and now they dragged me up, whatever, uh... I can, whatever, he talks about a woman, um, they hate her so much, the hatred's real, now it's mine, etc. Oh, yeah, the mother would kill him again if he could. So, they're painting the picture that whoever he's embodying in this song is hated by everyone. And it's just like, people hate them because he's this, like, icon of hate. And then he describes how, like, people treat things that they hate i think so they sit below me stare and scream out threats at my nakedness their tongues are hanging from their uh out from their mouths i hope they don't tear me limb from limb so much noise so much hatred so much violence they love me they'd kill to have me they have to kill me their hatred's pure i am divine so like i think in the sense is that 
when you're hated like that, you end up almost attracting the same kind of religious zealots, the types of mm. like fanatical sorts. And he's describing, and you know, I mean, even in Canada, with with like conversations like immigration, I don't know that this is about necessarily specific anything's it's pretty much just commenting on how people obsess and how they tr- how animalistic they become when hatred is their their like focus like when you kick me when you rape me when you burn me when you break me i am divine i am divine and i i guess another point of it is when you apply all of this hatred and when you do this and you our culture is obsessed with hating yeah. shit we are, mm-hmm. we love to hate up in fucking north america maybe around europe too and like i think what he's trying to convey is that when you do apply that level of hatred you ultimately deify that thing that presence and give it more fans and grow it and in a sense turn it into something divine even if your whole goal was to crush it entirely um i like it i i lyrically it's pretty fucking interesting again um i think they all are uh it's a four and a half for me because the music's a little more upbeat it's a little more fun i feel like there's a funky groove to the way they they mm-hmm. come at this i especially like that like breakdown part when he's like wait you kick me wait you rape me i like, guess just fucking hype the way he, like flips around and yeah no the, the the breakdown was good but. and yeah I, I really dug it um so yeah four and a half on five like i said um the next one had a music video we watched, uh, and I'm not being a liar. We we watched it. I'll hide behind a smile. You like this one? Yes, and I ain't gonna lie about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I really did. Um, I think this was one of their hits, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, this was a single. If, if I'm not mistaken, this might be one of the biggest songs that's ever charted from Rollins Bam. Like, this one actually got some Rollin happening to it mm-hmm. in terms of momentum. But yeah, and uh, it had the video. I don't know if anything else had a video. If it did, I would be lying to say I watched those. <laughs> and the puns won't stop. Uh- <laughs> But I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, and I think, like, he, this one, he starts off by actually talking this time, like, just plain talking but in this like mysterious way i don't know like something is happening it's let me swap. tell you yes there we go and the video is just funny if you watch it i mean it's the swap. way he creepy suave hello yeah <laughs> um and then the, i mean there's the hook um and i mean if you read how uh, according to genius how they um came up with that it was just talking and once it was like oh i'm a liar and then their producer or whatever was like that's a hit you're making that yeah, like the, apparently they would perform it for a while as part of a warm up thing. It was really just a goof, and it really turned into like their biggest hit. And it's great, and just the way he says it. And then I feel like now watching the video, it's even more it stuck to me even more. I think, but I, I yeah, four seventy five. It was good, and yeah, it is a hit. I mean, they did a good job. I, I understand why it charted. It's 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 very different than you'd think. Like, I don't know. Why is it a hit? But then when you listen to it a few times, it really just, it, it sticks to you. And the lyrics, especially, I don't know. I no, found it's it. It's like a progression and flow. You know what mm. it is? It's that everyone has probably dated this person. Yeah. Fallen for their tricks. Or they have a friend or six who have consistently serial dated this type of person, right? Mm. And what I like about it, again, is that it's giving you the different perspective. So it's not him you're not looking through his eyes and seeing the other person or condemning someone or condemning yourself he's just it's somebody else literally like telling you or it's him well it's like he's saying having... himself like he's the one just talking about yeah i'm, I'm a liar and i mean like well it's kind of like he's saying his lines in the mm-hmm. verse but then he's in in like, you you hear the thought process <laughs> happening at like the exact same time right cool. like so you think you're gonna live your life alone in darkness and seclusion yeah i know You've been out there and tried to mix with those animals, and it, you know I've used lines like this in the past, like just oh, those guys are heathens. They're not that suave. I know the types of dudes you fucked with in the past. See, I happen to be like of a slightly higher grade of that of those <laughs> guys. I'm better, you know. <laughs> I will pay attention to you. I will give you all the love that you need. Uh, I will listen. 
You know, that type of shit. He's just dropping lines. But yeah. he's he's so smooth. Mm. I, in this verse, and that's and in the music video, because the music video kind of goes along with it, and the music all goes along to convey – it's like a bit of a movie. Yeah. So if you think about it, when you look at a serial killer or something in a movie, often in the beginning scenes, they're, they're charming looking. They're nice. They're cool. And then it gets creepier. And then it gets creepier. It's and a creepier trait of a creepier. psychopath. <laughs> yeah. And he's really, like, captures the essence, like, flawlessly. And he goes, you know – but the solitary refinement of your room spits you back out onto the street and now you're desperate and in need of human contact and then you meet me and your whole world changes because everything I say is everything you ever wanted to hear. And so <laughs> you drop your defenses mm-hmm. and all uh, your fears and you trust him completely and he's perfect in every way. I'm pretty sure that when you look at relationships, especially if the person's a little bit emotionally fragile, maybe they haven't had the best luck with dudes and they finally meet this new liar. Sorry, this new nice guy. And he's all <laughs> fucking great. And they're describing him. They have like this ethereal glow to them as they describe the situation. I mean, sure, you must have seen this. Oh, too many of them. <laughs> you know? And then as he like... He he almost baits you in the song into thinking he's this suave guy. Like, I'm a little bit falling, you know, a little bit like, well, damn, Henry, come on. <laughs> and then he's like, but I'm a liar. And he just flips it on you. But then he just turns full psychopath. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm a liar. I'm, I'm fucking He'll tell your mind out. I'll burn your soul. I'll turn you into me. I'll turn you into me. And that's an interesting point because mm. often people who have serial dated liars just become that shit. Or if you, it's, like, it's kind of like the, the idea you become your parents, become what you hate in a sense, right? Not to say everyone hates their parents, but like just – You sometimes just turn into things you – everyone has traits about them that came from their parents that they wish they didn't have. That's just facts. Um, And uh, yeah, and then he goes on and he he, – in the second thing, right, the music's a little angrier, a little more intense. In the music video, part of his face is a little more dirty and then he goes, I'll hide behind a smile and understanding eyes and I'll tell you things you already know so you can say, I really identify with you so much. I'm not going to lie. That's really easy to do. You basically need to ask two or three really interesting questions that go to talk about something right at the beginning of the fucking conversation. Based on that, she's going to say one or two things that are super clear triggers, which will let you in about an hour drop this really profound, deep sounding shit that is almost a stereotype that correlates with that little nugget of truth she gave you. And then she identifies with you. And it doesn't really matter if you believe it. The fact that you can interpret that shit out of her will make her feel a little bit more connected to you. It's a science. <laughs> it really is. And I don't mean that in like whatever. It's just it really is if you want to like run people down. I'm mm. saying that's marketing. <laughs> <laughs> it's really just marketing is that. Uh, you can just apply it to this this other world. And I think he's just trying to show you in like this living example in a way that I just described to you gay, my version of maybe game at one point. Mm. He's kind of doing the exact same thing and showing you how real this level of manipulation is as he flips it again. And then if you'll give me one more chance, I swear that I will never lie to you again <laughs> because now I see the destructive power of a lie. They're stronger than truth. I can't believe I ever hurt you. And look, I'm not going to say in the past I was a great boyfriend. I've done some stupid things and I've lied my fucking self silly trying to pretend I would ever be better than that. I grew up way later on after losing people and shit. But like, yeah, you kind of say whatever. And even the, the reformation lies that he tells, he captures the whole story. You meet the perfect guy. You realize he's completely fake as fuck and he's hollow and he's shallow. And you start seeing it and you start seeing dirt on his face in the video. Mm-hmm. By the end, he's just covered in it. He's almost begging for another chance. He recognizes he's dirty. He's never going to do it again. But you know what? As he laughs maniacally at the end, he's a liar. I, I got a sort of like the talented Mr. Ripley vibe from it, like the character. Okay. From uh, that. Oh, you haven't seen that? No. He's a psychopath and it's kind of the same thing where okay. it starts off and ends anyways. It's a fun parallel. That's really um, interesting. But we should take a step back. Well, I gave it a four and a oh, half you did it. on five. I did I'm sorry. Just saying. I got really into it. Uh, like, because again, Henry gave us plenty to talk about. Four and a half on five. And mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. We now can, we can take a step. We can, we can do that. I see through the lies. Like this one? <laughs> I mean, I don't dislike it. There we go. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, <laughs> I feel... <laughs> I, But no, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I just feel like at this point it kind of starts... It starts to hit that like, oh, I feel like I've heard this before. Okay. Mark? Um, 
I mean, I liked it. I liked the spoken part. And, I mean, he's still... I'll give him the fact that he's really good at making you feel that he's definitely feeling what he's saying, if that sentence made sense. Um, but I... I don't know. I don't have as much to say on this one. So what did you give it? Like a four. Okay, cool. Um, musically, it's pretty cool. I like the the, the fact that I, I don't I don't feel like it's actually that similar. I feel like they've done a good job at like layering the tracks to have lots of distinctions. But like I said, my first couple of listens, I did think the whole album kind of sounded like one mesh. Mm. But then as I got more into it, I could hear like like this one is a little more guitar driven. It's not it's not on the punk side or anything. It's just kind of got this aggression to it. Uh, that's interesting. This song, if I understand correctly, uh, is he doesn't want to deal with people who are whining and complaining and trying to parasitically suck his energy. So he's essentially calling them weak and wants to crush them and like to step back. Like you're so fucking weak, you disgust me. It's a drag when you bring me down, and all the things you say, no one cares anyway. But you got to deal with me or you step back. And I feel like this is just him kind of saying all the things he wishes he could say to fucking annoying wankers who like to complain all the time. And I used to be a little bit like that, so I get where he's coming from. Like, you just, you look around, and everything you say is negative. Everything you say is just fucking pointless. Everything you say is just trivial bullshit for the sake of saying it. And you're not actually trying to say anything profound. And when you complain... You want to tell the same bullshit story over and over again to get sympathy. You're not even trying to find a solution. You're not trying to be proactive. I think he's saying he don't have time for that shit. Um, finds you pathetic and weak, or fake and a lie. He'd like to crush you at an inset, but he doesn't want to do the time. As he pointed out, he understands that there are consequences to actions, but uh, this is him expressing his desire to destroy you parasitic folk. Um, I don't have a lot more to comment on this track. I don't really feel like it's as profound to go through it lyrically. I think it's got a great level of expression. He says fuck a lot more than I've heard on this album. <laughs> uh, I'm giving this another four. It's musically really cool. Um, I agree with his whine. There's an irony in how he's whining here about whiners, but I agree with his whining about whiners because I feel like he's trying to be a little proactive with it. He's trying to say don't complain aimlessly so his complaining has an aim Mm. and thus doesn't fall into the same category (laughs) and if people were to stop behaving that way he would no longer have to feel this way so i don't hate where he's coming from he just wants to see the world be more positive and full less haters i think a lot of people would 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 be cool with that four on five but hell i may be wrong man (laughs) neither one's worse This is an interesting song to talk about in 2018. So I'm interpreting Henry Rollins for the haters. Um, basically, in he is responding to the ladies who have gone through some sexual assault and generalize their disdain towards men and their feelings that all men are trying to just get in their pants and put them into this bucket and shit and Henry's responding to summarize I'm not all men I'm not all man I'm just one man I'm not that man I think it's it's interesting that this song is like 20 something years old and literally like there's a lot of people kind of saying the exact same thing. Now, there's a lot of people who take that message and twist it to like belittle another cause. But I think Henry is just not having the best of luck with ladies and is frustrated with mm-hmm. being accused of things like a lot. And from what I understand, he really is a decent fucking guy. So it must be a little bit frustrating that people just put him in a bucket. Like stop of, assuming things. And yeah, so like and he says you say we're all the same you don't even know my name those are the first lyrics right it's to really kind of point it out just because i'm a man you assume i'm a man and it doesn't matter who i am um sometimes someone somewhere kind of hurt uh once hurt you and i'm one of them so i take all the blame you think you know me you don't know a damn thing about me a and damn hook. thing about me <laughs> but like if you think about what he's saying it's just 
I'm not the guy who raped you, so I don't. Or did something. Anything. But, like, the tone he's taking is, I don't give a fuck that you got raped. Don't blame me because that motherfucker did. Like, don't put me in that category. That's, like, the tone he's kind of taking yeah. on this track. Um, get away and leave me well alone. Take your damage and take it back. Or, sorry, here's one subject everyone enjoys. I heard the boys talk the talk to the boys. I heard the girls say the same thing to the girls. Oh man, it's all the same. Neither one's worse. Now uh, I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't always tell the truth, but then again, neither did you. So here he's talking about how everyone likes to fuck, and everybody likes to be a player, and everybody lies a little bit to get laid. Mm. Men and women are horny creatures, is I think what he's trying to convey. Not just one. Men aren't the only ones that are horny. Women watch <laughs> porn. Women masturbate. I think that that's the kind of attitude. So he's. We are uh, equal. I like how he's taking these isolated kind of conversational points and expressing them in each verse. Um, and the next one, get away and leave me well alone. Take your damage and take it all back home. I'm not to blame for your misery. Take your threats away from me. Take that damage and leave me all alone. I won't try to patronize you and say I know everything that you've been through. You know it just might be you got no problem with me. I'm not a rapist in waiting. I'm not the one you should be hating. Check it out. I mean, so if there was any, like, if you wondered if I was interpreting this incorrectly or that I was off, no. He is literally taking that tone of, like, fuck mm. your bullshit. I don't care what you've really been through. Stop blaming me. I'm not all men. I'm this man, not that man. And you know what? Maybe we could be fucking friends if you would just get <laughs> over your shit. That's the tone he took. Um, literally, you don't know a damn thing about me. No, yeah. no, 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 like, how dare you? You take your fear and pull it inside. It builds up and the rage starts to rise. You push it out and your anger is blind and you see me as the enemy. That's not the way it ought to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So here he's saying you deal with your trauma incorrectly and um, you shouldn't blame men. I, like, I'm not having an opinion on this one, man. I'm not touching that shit personally. I am interpreting Henry here. Oh, you generalize and tell me lies like all I want's between your thighs. I kind of like that line, though. All the things, just because it's, it's such a twist on, yeah. like, I, like, that, like, rhyme scheme. I never, anyway. But I put you through all the things that I might do, et cetera. Anyway, he goes on like that, and he just kind of keeps it running. Um, it's interesting. I got, I I was fucking interested in this song. I think Henry in 2018 never would have written this poem or released it the same way he did. I think some of the tone he took on this, it wouldn't fly today. Yeah. But at the same time, in the 90s, maybe it really needed to be said like this. I don't really know what it was like back then, but it was a lot more censored. And maybe he... He really, like as Kristen said a few times now, it's really about the way he's expressing these things that you really feel. You really feel like this is genuine emotion that he's pouring at you. Yeah. And maybe I'm okay with the tone he's chosen because I think it's, it's, again, a conversation starter worth having. Maybe he's satirizing people who say this shit. Maybe. I really don't know. Or maybe he's just mad at people and he's responding. It could be either. But, but yeah, four I and a half on five. It's fucking cool. I think that um, this, again, like, this really fits with the style or the genre of music, the fact that um, he's kind of speaking it and saying it intensely. And I feel like if this was in a song and he were to sing it, it would just also give a different tone or a different vibe. Um, so, I mean, thumbs up to that for this song. I really like it. Um, I think it's well said. It's well expressed. And the music behind it, too, so the track itself is really cool. Um, it wasn't my favorite song as a whole to listen to but i think like like the aspects of it in itself are very smart and i think something again that's like needed to be put out there i would give it a 4.15 okay and then it's volume 4 but no point one five. <laughs> live there, talk to me and it how'd you feel about this one I liked it. It felt more like a song. Okay. Um, it was long, though, I found. Um, but I like the music, I, the guitar and the song especially. It's something that I picked out. And, I mean, don't have much to say other than that. And then, I mean, we'll get into the lyrics. But I, I would overall give it, like, a four. Yeah. Ish. 
I feel like the album's tone shifts a little bit. Like, the first eight songs kind of describe a lot of our topics. And maybe I'm just misinterpreting it, but as of here, I feel like the energy is more exhausted almost. Like, he, he his, like, state of mind is shifted a little bit. Mm. I might be reading too much into that, but... I spend time searching my mind, walking blindly. I'm alive, but I don't know why my thoughts threaten me. Paranoia, fear, and guilt. I hope I don't explode. I'm a bomb that you can't defuse, a gun that you can't unload. And then I guess this one is just angry people who, like, they have a lot of situations. like, And we see it a lot with some of the more, again, social media, bubble-driven conflicts that we see online where a lot of passionate people reaffirm in their hatred, which he's expressed earlier. Maybe this, this happens a little bit about the weight of hatred. Maybe that just dawned on me. Because all these songs Ooh. have kind of been about hatred a little bit. Oof, epiphanies. <laughs> um, so, and here he's kind of maybe pointing out, like, like so there is this, like, anxiety and this paranoia and this almost psychological damaging nature to living a life so consumed with, with like, hating all that shit. So, and then, I don't listen, I don't know, man, I don't care, you're talking about the hell you've seen, man, I live there. And then, this is kind of him, again, pointing out to people who kind of are complaining or pointing out some shit, and he's like, fuck that, I come from the dirt, I know what the fuck I'm talking about. You guys don't know shit. Um, You're talking to the living dead, and I guess maybe, in a sense, he's so full of hate, and he's so full of Mm. anxiety for things that... I, I'm just kind of guessing a little bit on this one. I did not resonate as much with me. Oh, bullet-driven eyes, what can you tell me? Oh, I'm living a nightmare. Yeah, I'm on the edge, shrinking back from the ledge, looking out my window, down upon my heritage, strip malls, thin walls, people paralyzed beneath the sun. Why me? Why now? I see the dirty millions, and I try to survive somehow. And I guess he's just not fitting into this world. He he sees this capitalist wave of of, like concrete jungleness taking mm. over and he's kind of not fitting in he doesn't like he doesn't like the sheep or whatever and i guess he's losing his connection with like nature or whatever and i'm not trying to sound so fluffy with my descriptions i'm just lacking words um you just get the sense that he feels like such an outcast and he he's tired of of a lot of things that are going on um he he hears gunshots screams what can you do to me what can you say i used to be a lie but i threw it all away I used to have problems i used to live a lie i've been sidewalk bleed and i watched a mother cry i used to have a mind i used to wonder why but now i go from day to day and i walk around to die like he did and i wonder now if like the song's kind of taking on the perspective of somebody who lives in the hood or lives in one of these crazy fucking environments who's just so jaded who's just so fucking overwhelmed with these negative kinds of circumstances that ultimately um they end up with this broken they can't it doesn't matter what you have to say they just block everything fuck out the the question is why is it called volume four yeah i did have that question i wasn't sure if there were previous volumes on earlier albums and i forgot to google it and look at it but if any of you know or want to take a guess i would love to comment i want to know i'm curious it would be awesome if you could help us out like that. Yeah, I gave it a 4.25. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, it wasn't my favorite song, but it was still pretty cool. It was something to listen to, you know? I don't know if you gave a grade. I don't yeah, remember. I guess I'm kind of tired, <laughs> and it's uh, it's hard to remember. Just this to keep me sticking around. So do you like this one? I like this one more. I felt like you can, f- you can really feel um, what he's... What he said? Well, he's tired, and then you, <laughs> you've got the music kind of putting that like into effect because it's just kind of like a mess, and it feels like you're just falling slowly, and things are tangling up, and there's like that whole detuning guitar thingy going on. I really like it, lack the terminology uh, honestly, here. Honestly, it sounds like everything is being played wrong. Yeah, on purpose in a way that sounds really good. Yeah, but everything is off. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It was another. It was another song that I didn't like that, and it's really like it's it's a melody, but then it's just completely that like D tuning slowly. I'm gonna be, and it, it gives the like you can feel that he's tired, and it's kind of creepy, and it gives you that sense of like oh, I'm kind of losing control. I'm losing my mind. I'm fucking tired of everything. I feel the weight finally getting to him. Fun. 
title usage. But yeah, uh, I gave it a four and a half. I liked it. it yeah. Cool. Um, like the first Mysterious time, too. Yeah, it is. Like the first time I heard it, I was like, is this real? <laughs> like, is this the same fucking guys? Like, it sounds terrible the first time you hear it. In my opinion. Like but in it, the good way. No, but like the first time I heard oh. it, I wasn't really paying attention. It's just like, dram, 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 like this like wangy guitar, nothing sounds right. But then you really listen to it and everything sounds right. It's really well composed to convey this emotion, like you said, of like almost drifting off. Like it's almost like the music, the music is tired, mm-hmm. not just him. Everything around him. Like and he's so tired of himself. He's tired in his sleep, tired of lies, tired of secrets. Uh... He's tired of the cigarettes he keeps, so he's, you know, looking inside of him. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't like the introspection. He doesn't like thinking. He he needs something because the grind of his life is just, like, burning him out this day in, day out, trying to, like, fucking keep it together, go through some shit. He's real tired. He's tired of the things that he hears or what he fears, and, you know, sure. he's never seen the end so clear. He's tired. almost kind of sounds suicidal in a sense. The music kind of echoes that, too. Anyway. It's almost like the sentiment of, like, you've lived, like, 30 years, 40 years of the same shit. You look ahead, and it's just the same shit, and you have maybe not the best person, and maybe you're full of all this hate he's been describing, and it's just really taking, like, I guess the anxiety of the last song mm. and compounding it into more of the dead, tired, and exhaustiveness yeah. of, like, what it does to you kind of <laughs> over time a little bit. All the weight is getting to him. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, that's kind of, kind of cool, though, if you can kind of go back and find things and then add them up and then it will equal to this song. It's like, not that it's a concept album, but it's still like a, rec- like a theme, like it feels more personal, and I think that's something really cool in an album when it doesn't feel like it's a bunch of just singles put together for the sake of an album, but it's really... Yeah, I think that single is an accident. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I gave this a uh, a 4.5 again. I thought it was really fucking cool. It was really enjoyable to listen to. And uh, I, I feel like the more I listen to it, the more I come to appreciate it. But often I find that's the mark of really good music. Like if you want to evaluate something... What happened? Something somebody said to me about like food. If you want to have a good idea of how synthesized or bullshit your food is in terms of its flavor, chew it for like 30 seconds and see what it tastes like. Because like shit like chips and stuff, we like crunch them down. We don't yeah. really chew them. But if you really sit there and chew a Ruffles chip for like 30 seconds to a minute, just chew it the way you're supposed <laughs> to chew, it's this disgusting. And, like, it heats Pace up thing. a little bit. Like, it almost gets warmer in your mouth. Pringles, like, that's that's more scary. So, like, uh, but if you were to, like, crunch on carrot for 30 minutes, it's going to taste like carrot mm. after 30 minutes because it's fucking like carrot. carrot. You know, like, it's, it, it's it, that's what it is. It's not just a bunch of chemicals that your saliva washes away, leaving paste at the end, you know. <laughs> anyway, so that was... I don't even remember what the fuck that came from. I, I really don't know how that happened. Um, maybe, are we still talking about tired even? <laughs> <laughs> That's not tired we are. Oh, fuck. No, the uh, album, we're talking about the album. Um, and yeah, I, I, don't know. I don't remember. But, so yeah, food is good. Uh, maybe I'm hungry. Um, Alien Blueprints mm. is, is, the next, is the next song. Damn, do it, damn. It makes you hate it. Did you like the uh did you like the alien blueprint one? It was interesting. Uh you did view it, okay, it might be the weirdest sentence ever, but it sounds kind of alien y. I don't know. The um and intense. It's intense. Is it what do you call it punk or what what kind of music would you call it? What style would you I don't know. Yeah, it's more it's, aggressive, faster. It's very more. driven and it kind of reminds me a little bit of, of was it icon? Okay. But not really kind of. Um and I mean, lyrically it was interesting too, but I, j- it was really just not my favorite one. Okay. I think like once you're getting to the end of an album, either it's like it's a make it or break it. Either you have something that's like, okay, you pass by it or you have like, whoa, like that song. I remember that song. Damn. And it's not one of those. So they give it like a, a 4.15. I would disagree with you though. I think it's pretty fucking awesome. Um, you read like okay, like it is more well, punky, aggressive, which is more in line with what I like inherently. But it's also like got that like progressiveness where mm-hmm. like it flips up a little bit in the track, and they keep it interesting, and they do what they do well musically. 
Um, you reached out, you got burned, made tough by the lessons you learned. You never thought they could be so mean, be so hard, and cause you so much pain. Like a fool, you tried again. You really wanted to be their friend, but looking back, you see they just wasted your time. Self-loathing, the anger inside. You covered it up with pride. You always found a way to blame it on yourself, etc. Now, this I find really relatable because I was not a very popular person. In fact, I'm not really the most well-liked person. People have might find me interesting or whatever but it's not like people want to hang out with me that much outside of like party settings which is fine um i actually prefer it that way to be honest but like you get the, and it's because of stuff like i never really fit in so when i go into these groups it's like you, you try to like connect with people or you try to whatever and then they're mean to you and they, they treat you poorly and they, mm-hmm. they come at you because you're a bit of a weirdo and you don't fit in properly right and then I think this is just kind of commenting on that. It's kind of commenting that, you know what, uh, instead of like recognizing that these fuckers are wasting your time and your pursuit of them is not an efficient thing because as we know, Henry likes efficiency. Um, but like instead you internalize it into like self-doubt and hatred and shit and you, you blame yourself for the fact that people don't like you and you look for ways to like – you know, not really understand the situation. You get kind of emotional with it. I mean, so mad, so mean. The pain remained unseen at that time, pent up, wanting to explode. Been there, went through that shit. You know, you get mad, you try to deal with it, but it just builds up and it builds up and it builds up and you want to fight back, you know? What they did, the things they said, you wished you were dead, anything you have to to deal with them. And he's repeating lines like that, like anything you have to deal with them, to deal with them, you know, he's like emphasizing it. And he's just like stressed. Almost it sounds like he's almost suicidal over mm-hmm. like the the situation of that what he's been going through. Um, they made you hate. You couldn't wait to go out and do something great. Uh, turn around now and throw it back in their face. And so like, you know, he is inspired by the way that they bully him and are mean to him or her and they treat them poorly so they turn around want to flip it one off them and come back with even more hate like they taught this almost innocent person what hate was and now they're going to come back with retaliation modes um looking back you get yourself together looking back you see all the hatred inside now that you see you get to change your mind about yourself and you get to go on so go on and then that's a really interesting point. So he's saying kind of like when you look back later on in life, you can see all this hate comes from these moments that you've been through, your bullying, your whatever abuse you've been through. Like for me, high school is a fucking not fun situation. <laughs> but like, And it took a long time to get over that. But he's kind of right. At a certain point, holding on to that hate and harboring it in your heart is not a conducive way to – grow as a person individually within yourself and if you look at all walks of life social economic backgrounds this is a pretty prevalent message man religion or secular Mm -hmm. it's just kind of like let go of your hate understand forgiveness and shit it's not good to carry that weight yeah and you'll like be better and you won't be harboring so much bullshit um the wisdom uh now you see how you are the wisdom mixed it with all the scars go on uh out and watch all the fools pass the souls by they never know they never do it's always up to you you were never one of them they could never have been your friends the best revenge is to always survive yourself so again i really love this last little bit so he's pointing out now you're older you're wiser you're looking around you're seeing that you never were going to fit in with that crowd. They're not you. You're this weirdo. So embrace your weirdoness. And your best revenge is to fucking succeed. Because you got to imagine, if nobody liked Henry at 16, people are jealous of Henry at 45. You know what I'm saying? And I find that to be, like, the kind of fuel of motivation that keeps me grinding. Like, people don't like me, but I go out of my way to try to accomplish more than other people as that is the best revenge tactic I've ever <laughs> found in my life. It is. So I really identified a lot with this song. I understand where he's coming from. I totally feel like I was built from this alien blueprint he's describing. This mm. different universe, you know, people were like, I was born on the wrong time. Fuck that. I was born in the right time. I think it's a great title. And, like, it's a great time to be this kind of person because the world is your fucking oyster if you look around and see what opportunities are there and you let go of the hate in your heart a little bit. Mm. Maybe... I find that the less you watch the news, the easier it is to like go oh, hate. Um, but anyway, I give it a four point seven five. I feel like this song is like it's it's like this build up. So we've gone through like all these snapshots of hate and things that create that negative weight and stuff. And here he's saying, when you look back and you find out what it is that made you this way, 
let go of it, you know, like just just move on. And then it really builds into this conclusion where I feel like the finale is like the final thing he's got to say on all of this. So why don't we uh, shine over there? With your mind, it's hero time. It's t- How do you feel about this little album closer here? I think it's a nice album closer. I like that he chose this subject and the way he delivers it. And I think it's a little bit more like positive. It's little definitely a little more positive. Positive, upbeat. Um, I really, what, what I felt though is like, I was like, this wants to be a song and it's almost there. It's like just at the end and it would be a cool song. And I like, it's like, it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time to shine and kind of like, you know, um, align your body with your mind. So it's kind of like a nice conclusion to like, I think everything he's been expressing, just like you were saying, let go of that weight and shine. Um, I I liked how it closed. I would give it... Um, a four and a half. Okay. And I agree. I feel like this is like in the last song, he's contextualized that you are cut of this different cloth. So if you look at the last four, it's you're breaking down because all that hate that was described over the previous eight tracks kind of like create this anxiety and you don't want to listen and you're just stuck in a rut. And then he's exhausted. You're almost suicidal over it and you're falling asleep and you're drifting off. And then you have to recognize where this hate comes from and get over it Accept in the it. last song that we're coming for. And here, he's kind of selling it more to the point where like, if you listen to everything they said to me, I wouldn't be here. So if you listen to all the rules and the listens and what people tell you you should be doing, you don't get to be great. You get to be mediocre. You know, and if I took the time to bleed from all the little arrows shot my way, I wouldn't be here. So if you stop and you 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 like feel all the pain and you you embrace all the bullshit and you 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 focus on the part that the the part that you've been hit with like all these arrows, I guess he's like all the little things that sting you and hurt you along the way, then you won't achieve greatness. The ones who won't do anything are always like the ones who try to put you down and you can spend your entire life walking around in the nowhere land of self-doubt. I know tons of people who could be great. And I mean, I have this theory, right? Anybody can probably learn to rap. I, I'm not saying everybody can just be a rapper. <laughs> but I'm saying anybody could take the time to like put in a couple thousand hours worth of practice <laughs> and spit some rhymes. Literally anybody, any voice can do it. But most people don't believe they can do it, so most people don't do it. And then some people do it and have great sound engineers, but that's a whole other conversation. (laughs) But, like, in that mind, I think he's really trying to contextualize that point that people are so caught up in what they can't do that they don't actually try to do anything, and they focus on hate and shit. I mean, you know, it's time, it's time. Align your body with your mind. It's hero time. I love what he's trying to say. He's like, make yourself a fucking superhero. Build yourself up. Focus. Prioritize. Like, I'm trying to eat healthier. I'm trying to bike because it's exercise. I'm trying to not be quite, you know, the way I've been so that I can be a better person. Because I thought Ethan from H3H3 Podcast, Ethan Klein put it like this in one of his moments. I am feeling depressed, but I can't go see a therapist if I'm not really doing all the things to make myself healthier to like find out if there's something wrong. If I'm eating poorly and I'm not exercising and I'm being a lethargic fuck and that makes me depressed, why do I need a therapist? They should eat better and exercise more. And I took that to heart. So I started doing the same shit and he's kind of right. Your whole attitude kind of shifts when you live a little more correctly. It's psychology 101. <laughs> you know? Because sure? um, when you start to doubt yourself, the real world will eat you alive, etc., etc. And then at the end, um, he's got no time. I just thought it was interesting. Like, he's got no time for friction. I got truth in times of fiction. I've got no time for hype suicide. I'm not that type. I've got no time for drug addiction. No time for smoke or booze. Too strong for a shortened lifespan. I've got no time to lose. It's time to shine. Yeah, it's hero time. It's hero time. So he's not interested in anything that's going to shorten his life. He's, mm. He probably is super healthy. He doesn't want to smoke or consume shit that he sees kills people faster because he wants to have this long life because he has all these things he wants to do because as we know, Henry likes efficiency and he wants to be as efficient as fucking possible. And the only way to do that is to bleed out your hatred and negativity, health up and be more positive and mm. shit. And find your opportunity. Stop being a wanker and whining and start doing some shit. I think that's what he's trying to say with that track. Be that as it may, Musically, it's more of that old timey rock sound. I feel, yeah. and I'm not as into that, so I found it really hard to like get into the track. I found it a little bit boring, 
compared to some of the other ones. Not bad. I think it's actually really well made, and it's really talented musicianship. It's and just, the placement is accurate. <laughs> and like the story is driven forward on the album, and, but it's just not my cup of tea. So I give mm -hmm. it a four because I recognize what it is. It's just not what I'm into. Anyway, I think that's now the end of the album. We can do that little section where we wrap up uh, for this project. Mm -hmm. Straight up is a 4.35 on 5. That's what I gave it. Some of the songs are pretty stellar. And like most of it's really well made. Like most of it's a 4.5 to me. Mm. Nothing was really a 5 to me because this is so fucking weird. And I'm not used to this talky, singy style that he has. The musicianship is really great, but I'm not that familiar with the genre of music that they're playing with. In terms of, I have a lot of trouble appreciating the why it's brilliant. I just know they're doing a lot of the cool shit all the brilliant people do. <laughs> so I can see that it's that good, but I'm not appreciating it properly. I mean, a couple of them are just a little bit like, okay, but it's a mixed bag, like 12 tracks, 12, to me, really different songs. Subject matter wise has a flow and congruency. We really explore that psychological way to hatred on this album and how to break free. It's almost like Henry Rollins' self-help book um, in album form which is super interesting. Mm, Wasn't expecting that. I really enjoyed the project. I would like listen to more of the Rollins band because I want to know what other interesting shit will be said. But like, I don't yes. know that it's my first draw from like a musical front. I feel like it's more like fucking mind candy. It just, it just tickled my brain <laughs> and got me philosophizing and shit like that. Mm, I I would say I'd say the same thing. I feel like it's something that I'm not necessarily gonna just put on and listen to, like I would other music. Like it's not an album that I was like, yes, I'm gonna listen to this now. I'm so happy I discovered it. But at the same time, I can really respect it for what it is. And also, I mean, it was a new, it was a cool discovery. To be honest, it was a great way I think to to see this genre. It wasn't like a, oh great, this is gonna be weird. Um, I would give it a 4.25 overall because okay. I respect it. I respect the style a lot. I like, I really like how he writes and then how he expresses himself through it and the technique he uses, all of his choices. And the music is great. The band is great. Like, overall, I, there's nothing particularly negative to say about it. Super and, cool. Yeah. So thank you for choosing this. Yeah, Lindell. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Lindell. It's his fault we did this. Lindell Williams. <laughs> um, but thank you all for watching. It's really awesome. I hope uh, we, we did Henry some justice and that you appreciated this. Or if you hated it, feel free to hit us up in them comments and do that thing where comments. you talk. Those long ones, I love them. I lo even when... Even because sometimes when we fuck with the more talented musician types, we get some like comments like literally this long tearing us new assholes for how bad we are at this. I want to read them if that's how you feel. They're that's fun. what I'm trying to say. Mm. She might not want to read them. I want to read them. I'll read them in my five to six day window. <laughs> but yeah, so thank y'all. Um, so we do have Patreon. So big ups to Lindell Williams, Mozart Mozart, and Super Old School in 1994. As you saw, you. this album request was a result of a Patreon. So if you have particular weird out there stuff, stuff that we're not comfortable with, and you want to see it done, um, you don't necessarily get to pick who does the show. It's just kind of going to be based on how it fits in. But we will make sure the album gets covered mm -hmm. to the best of our ability. Yeah. And um, so you can do that. Check, get early access, other fun Patreon bullshit. Uh, and if you don't want to do that, uh, you can feel free to subscribe, hopefully, mm -hmm. if you like, liked it. Like, subscribe, comment. Like it. Subscribe, eh, subscribe. I don't like saying that, but definitely <laughs> comment. I don't even care if you hit the like button. Personally, that's up to you. But please comment. I would love to talk to you. Is all Give us to feedback so we know what we're doing. Oh, yeah. And if, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. You can also give us suggestions for future reviews so that mm. we have some idea of what you want to see us cover. And uh, while not to imply that we only do requests from Patreon, we'll do requests from shit randomly if we want to do it. It's yeah. just Patreon forces our hand a little bit. <laughs> anyway, I'm just rambling a lot. Uh, thanks for being here. Thank Appreciate you. that. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Uh,